It's on? Yes. Um, so I, I absolutely believe that housing is a human right. Um, and in terms of uh, what can and should be done to help uh, make that uh, something in my brain to something uh, that occurs everywhere um, is a couple of things. So one, of course, is to make sure that we're all as active as possible um, on the advocacy front. And I think um, certainly a lot of the folks in this room probably um, don't interact that much with um, neither mom and pop landlords, small ones, nor uh, larger ones, unless it's uh, on nonprofit, perhaps like HDC. Uh, so I would say start by joining some of the associations that are out there. So, for example, uh, in Wilmington, they have uh, something called the Wilmington Housing Providers. And, you know, your money is as good as anybody's money, so they'll certainly take it um, and allow you to join. And that way you can sort of sit shoulder to shoulder with 50 landlords or something like that for the city of Wilmington, and I'm sure they're elsewhere. Um, I'm going to say it something like $35 per meeting. So maybe, and the meetings are monthly, so maybe a 200 to $250 a year cost. Uh, so that's one way. I think also um, helping landlords understand um, through more communications, through uh, more uh, sort of s small group meetings that happen, not when uh, the you know what is at the ban, and uh, we moved from uh, the uh, sort of happily ever after stage uh, that is always the case in the beginning when you sign a lease um, with someone who will move in the home. You don't want to wait until now it's divorce time and, and we're saying, oh, you, you didn't pay the rent or the tenant is saying, oh, well, you didn't give me great service. Why should I? Um, you want these kind of conversations to be ongoing. And I think someone like the Housing Authority or DSHA or others um, can help put those together. Uh, to make sure that there is ongoing dialogue. Uh, there are other things that don't directly relate to this, but that are also useful. So a rental registry uh, that's available online, and thought about this, Ray, when you were talking about uh, having something statewide uh, for a list of folks when they need a home. And something similar is needed uh, for rental registry for the city of Wilmington, no shade, but it is very on, uh, manual. Um, paper-based um, and going in person. And I think that both for landlords, if they can fill it out, as well as for tenants uh, or, or any other interested person, if they wanted to type in 123 Main Street uh, to see if that house is, in fact, uh, registered as a rental property, um, that could go uh, some way towards ensuring that properties that are the broken down ones on the block um, or seem to be filled with folks who don't seem to be sort of living up to their full end of the bargain, um, that there can be a conversation there. Thank you. Um, the first question is, I live in Lanyard, that applies to people who like highs of privacy. What do you think is one of the most common distance actually to make each one of what's a right to? Uh, so I think a big misconception about housing choice vouchers, and, and again, it's really a big misconception about poverty slash money, uh, is that it equates or ties to your worth as a human being. Um, and so more money equals better human being, less money equals worse human being. And so a housing choice voucher is just a proxy for um, that uh, perverse thinking, most unfortunately. Um, and so I have certainly seen um, all the time, over and over, uh, that it's really about the person, it's about the family. I can say that my best... Um, uh, family, uh, person, you know, family that lives in a house does have a housing choice voucher. Also, the worst one I ever had uh, had a housing choice voucher. Um, I've, I've had great ones without and great ones with. Um, and I think you have to really keep in mind, um, maybe especially uh, when you're talking uh, low income or, or affordable, um, is that the difference uh, in uh, economic purchasing power of the folks who live in those homes is is sensed. Uh, or exactly the same. Uh, so having a housing choice voucher is just, back to the long list, a matter of luck and good fortune. Um, anyone who rents in a neighborhood um, that is affordable, uh, more than likely it's not making a boatload of money. Um, and if they don't have a voucher, it's, it's, that's not the reason. It's not because of money. So I, I, I think that's one thing for landlords to understand. 
Um, I think also, you know, back to being proactive and having these kinds of conversations um, and finding ways to streamline processes, that would help because that could be a barrier for some folks not wanting to rent because they're like, oh, my God, all this paperwork. And just like I said, with this family, um, you, you know, each 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 component, each spoke of the wheel, having to make sure that uh, they check the necessary bots. So I don't know, uh, Ray, if you can help with this, but uh, on that uh, sort of page, uh, the Housing Authority, Wilmington Housing Authority, of course, has its inspectors uh, that they contract out. Uh, and then, um, well, I guess not in the case of the city of Wilmington, but the city of Wilmington might have a different set of inspectors. I know that uh, for city of Salem, that's definitely the case. You need an inspection from the city and you need an inspection from the housing authority. Uh, if that inspection could somehow be the same inspection, um, that would help uh, reduce the wait time that uh, tenants have and, and thus reduce uh, landlords. 